Black Spectacles is the architect's website for learning design software. This is just one of thousands of tutorials we've built to help you stay current and stay a step ahead of the competition. After this video, check out blackspectacles.com to gain unlimited access to all of our courses. The thing that you want to have before you do any work in Revit or right before you start working in Revit is you need to have a, what's called a Revit kickoff meeting. And this is where all of the team members, both your internal team, all the people that you're working with in your office, and all of the consultants, the structural engineer, the mechanical engineer, everyone that's working on the project. And in fact, I even include people that are not actually working in Revit. But maybe you have a couple of consultants uh, that are work actually working in CAD. But they're going to be interfacing with the people that are using Revit. So it's a good idea to have everybody that's involved in the project all come together in one place and discuss a whole list of things um, Revit related for the project so that everybody knows what everyone is responsible for on the project, what they have to do to coordinate models, to communicate with each other, and what is expected of each team member on the project. So what are the things that you need to talk about in a Revit kickoff meeting? Well, number one, you're going to talk about the project files. How are the project files going to be arranged on this project? How many different files are you going to use on the project? Um, you know, that's dependent on how many buildings there are, um, a variety of things. You know, who is responsible for what? Um, we've had situations in the past where um, there's more than one architect involved on a project. Maybe one architect is doing the exterior wall of the building. Another architect is doing the interior. Well, obviously in a case like that, you have one model that is the exterior of the building, another model that is the interior of the building, and you have to figure out how those two models are going to interact with one another. So the arrangement of the project files is very important. Who's going to do what? Who's responsible for what? How is the project going to be broken up? That all has to do with what models are going to be used on this project and who's going to be responsible for what. You have to talk about naming of the project files. You want the naming of the project files to be consistent across all of your, your files. You want to establish model exchange protocols. You want to know, how am I going to exchange this model? How am I going to coordinate with these other project men team members on, on the project? Uh, are we going to exchange models the old-fashioned way, uh, FTP them once a week? To, so that everybody has an updated file once a week? Or are we going to use an automated system, uh, either through Autodesk Buzzsaw, or a program like uh, Newforma, or something like that, that automatically exchanges models in the background, and you don't have to do anything manually? Uh, if you use a system like that, you can exchange models overnight, every single night, so that when you come in in the morning, you always have fresh linked models so that everyone is always up to date. You also have to uh, be aware of shared parameters. Uh, you should have a universal, or what I refer to as a universal shared parameter file that everybody on the team uses. And all of that, that shared parameter file is going to contain all of the parameters that everybody on the team needs to use. Now that doesn't mean that the architect or the structural engineer can't have their own personal shared parameter file for their use, but you typically need one that is universal for everyone. The other things you need to talk about in the Revit kickoff meeting is the project positioning. Um, where is the project origin point? And are you using origin to origin, or are you using shared coordinates to get all of the files arranged on the site appropriately? And once we get into Revit, we'll get into more of this. The next thing that you're going to be talking about in the Revit kickoff meeting is the location and the control of all your elements in the project. Um, are you going to be using the copy monitor function? If you are using the copy monitor function, what are you actually going to copy? And where are those things going to be native? Now on a typical project, the grids are going to be native in the structural engineering file, and they will be copy monitored into the architecture file. Levels, on the other hand, are native in the architecture file and are copy monitored into the structural file. That's just one example. 
You can also copy monitor walls and floors. However, I typically stay away from that and only copy monitor grids and levels. When it comes to MEP, there's also the issue of plumbing fixtures and lighting fixtures. Who is going to be responsible for those? What model are they going to be in? I've had some situations where all of the plumbing fixtures, the toilets, the sinks, and all of those things are actually in the architectural model. And then the MEP engineer just connects into them or creates another version of those things in their model. Um, I've had other projects where all of those things actually existed solely in the mechanical or in the plumbing model. Uh, likewise with light fixtures, you have to make the decision is the architectural model going to contain the lighting fixtures or are the lighting fixtures going to be in the electrical model? And if they are in the electrical model, how are you going to coordinate that? How is the architect who is responsible for the placement of the lights going to communicate that to the electrical engineer who's actually placing the light fixtures into the model? The next thing that you have to address is project phasing. If you are in fact using project phasing, not all projects will use it. But if you do have a phased project, either it's an existing building that you're renovating or it's a project that has a phase one, two, and three, uh, if you are using phasing, that is something that you need to address in the Revit kickoff meeting and have everybody on the team know exactly how phasing is going to be used on the project. The next thing that you want to discuss and one of the most important things is the actual scope of work. What is going to be modeled? What is not going to be modeled? And what this is really referring to is what is the level of detail to be included on the project and when. Now, there is an AIA document called E202, which addresses this issue. It is a document that basically explains the level of detail on a BIM project. There are five levels of detail, or OLDs. Level of detail 100 all the way up to 500. And you can read the uh, AIA E202 document to, to, and it describes exactly what all those levels of detail means. But typically part of your BIM execution plan is defining, number one, what those levels of development are and at what stage in the project everyone is responsible to have modeled the building up to that level of detail. So for example, um, in the concept design or in the schematic design, uh, part of a project, you may be modeling up to level of detail 100 for some items, but level of detail 200 for other items. Um, you, for uh, construction documents, it's level of detail 300 is typically what construction documents are. However, maybe in the contract, you're not modeling everything all the way up to level 300. Maybe for some items, you're only modeling up to level 200. So this is very important because it has to do with how much work you're putting into the model and how much effort you're putting in. So scope of work is very important. Level of detail is very important. Another thing that's important along these same lines is you have to know ahead of time or you should know ahead of time, what am I going to be scheduling on this project? Because those are the things that you have to make sure that you have all the correct parameters in those particular categories, in those particular families. Um, for example, if, you're, if you have a curtain wall system and you're going to be scheduling all of the curtain panels, you're going to approach building those curtain panels in a, in a slightly more methodical, more careful manner than if you know that you, you're not responsible for scheduling them. Uh, you're going to have to add more information into those families. You're going to have to put parameters actually into those families and then manage that information because it's going to end up on a schedule as opposed to if you know that plumbing fixtures, for example, they need to be in the model, but you're not responsible for producing schedules for that information. Well, then you can just place those plumbing fixtures in there and you don't have to worry about adding a bunch of parameters like what the model number is for that toilet or that sink and, and you know what's the manufacturer and, and all of those kinds of information. So what is being scheduled and what is not being scheduled is very important. Also, in terms of scope of work, you need to understand if there is CAD being used on this project, what is it being used for and in what circumstances. Um, and then lastly, you need to know what is the sheet list for this project? What are the sheets that are going to be produced? How many floor plans? 
what elevations, what kind of wall sections are we doing. You have to have sort of a, a, a mock-up of what the set is going to be or a sheet list for the project. And that typically is, it comes out of a kickoff meeting or it, the, the sheet list comes out of the discussion in the kickoff meeting. The next things you want to discuss in this meeting are common project settings. What line weights are you going to be using? What object styles are you going to be using? Um, shared parameter files, like I talked about before. Uh, if you are need to export things out to CAD, you need to establish what those export settings are going to be. Uh, if you're importing things from CAD, you need to establish what those import settings are. And then lastly, uh, materials. You have to make sure that everybody is using the same set of materials. So this is usually just a, a process of either the architect establishing what all these things are going to be and then distributing them out to all of the team members. Or sometimes it's a little bit of negotiation for, uh, you know, where are we getting the object styles for or creating new styles specifically for that project. And then another very important thing to discuss at the Revit kickoff meeting is the coordination techniques. How are you actually coordinating with one another? What is the method of coordination? Uh, are you going to have regularly scheduled coordination meetings? And are those coordination meetings either going to be online or are they going to be all together in the same room? You know, how exactly is that going to work? Uh, are you going to have coordination logs? Are you going to be tracking coordination issues? You know, this doesn't really have to do with Revit per se. It's uh, more about how you're going to be communicating with one another and how you're going to use the information in the Revit models to coordinate them. And it's best to have all of that communicate all those communication issues ironed out ahead of time than starting the project, getting halfway through the project and realizing that things aren't coordinated and you have no structure for how to coordinate these things. And then lastly, schedule. Talk about schedule. Uh, what is the project schedule? What is the, not only the project schedule, what, it, what is the BIM timeline? Uh, when are you starting models? Um, when do you expect to start linking models together? Uh, there's going to be a lag time between when you start a model and when it has enough information in it to link, start linking into other files. For example, typically the architect is the first uh, team member to start a Revit model. The structural engineer and the MEP engineer follow along a little bit later on. So mapping out a timeline for that to happen. When is the architect going to start the model? When is the structural engineer and the MEP engineer going to start their models? When are you going to start linking the models together and when are you going to start coordination efforts? Uh, so layering all of that on top of the overall project schedule gives you a better idea of, of how this is all going to work. And with discussing all of those things in your Revit kickoff meeting, you'll start a project off on the right foot so that once you actually start getting into Revit, a lot of the questions that you have are already going to be answered. And if you have an, a BIM execution plan, you'll already have a document for all the team members to reference and to know exactly what they're doing on the project. You can find the next tutorial in this course on blackspectacles.com. Just click the link below this video. And for other tutorials in architecture software, check out blackspectacles.com. It's the architect's website for learning design software with courses in software like CAD, Revit, Rhino, 3ds Max, Grasshopper, Photoshop, and many more. Visit blackspectacles.com now to see more free tutorials and to gain unlimited access to our entire course library.